Hey folks, this is Adam from Rails Auto Scale, and I'd like to show you how to get started using Rails Auto Scale on your application. It only takes a minute, so let's dive right in. Now, for this demo, I'm going to install from RailsAutoScale.com using this Try Rails Auto Scale for Free button. I can also install from the Heroku add on marketplace or from uh, Heroku's command line interface. All three of those options are great, but this way I just need to choose which of my Heroku apps I want to install this on and tell it to provision the add-on. And that's it, I've got Rails Auto Scale installed and now I can go set it up. So I'm gonna click Rails Auto Scale and Rails Auto Scale is gonna let me know that I need to install the Rails Auto Scale agent gem. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it into my gem file and run bundle to install that gem. And now that it's installed, I can just commit and deploy that change. And for this demo, I'm deploying just by directly pushing to Heroku. Obviously for a real application, you might have to go through a code review or a staging app. And so this process would take more than uh, a couple minutes. But since we can push directly to Heroku, um, we can get through this pretty quickly. Okay, once those changes are deployed, we can go back to Rails Auto Scale and verify our setup. And there we go, we are all set. Our app is connected to Rails Auto Scale. And let's see what we're looking at here. Up here at the top of the dashboard, we have your request queue time over the past 24 hours. Now we just installed this, so there's not much to show here. Um, and then we have a little window that we can move or drag to change the zoomed views below. So the next chart we have is also queue time, but a zoomed in view of it, where we also see a red dashed line and a blue dashed line. Now these are your upscale and downscale thresholds. So this shows if request queue time goes over this red dashed line, that's gonna trigger an upscale. And then once it remains below the blue dash line for 10 minutes, that'll scale down. And we'll have to enable auto scaling for that to take effect, which we'll do in just a moment. The bottom chart here shows our web dynos. We've currently got one web dyno running and when there's any scaling activity, we'll see it there. So to enable auto scaling, we're gonna go over to settings. We've got our default upscale and downscale thresholds. These defaults work really great for most apps, but you can tweak it however you need to. We need to tell Rails Auto Scale how high or low we're willing to scale. So for this, let's say we'll, we can go from one to three web dynos. We'll enable auto scaling and save those changes. All right, back at the dashboard, uh, we can see not much is happening because it's a demo app and it's not actually receiving any traffic. So let's force a scaling event by kind of hammering this app with some requests. So I'm gonna open this app. Um, and this demo app has this little tool that I built in just to kind of simulate some long running requests. So each time I tap this fire request button, it is going to uh, send a request that takes 1000 milliseconds or one second to process. So I'm just gonna tap this a few times, fire off a few requests um, that will cause some request queue time increases, hopefully enough to trigger an auto scaling event. And this time, when we go back to the Rails auto scale dashboard, let's reload again. There we go. So those queue times exceeded our upscale threshold We've triggered a scale event down here, so we're up to two dynos now. And if we waited 10 minutes, um, we would see as things settled back down, we would scale back down to one dyno. And that's it. So we've got Rails Auto Scale set up. We can leave it and let it do its thing. It'll scale my app up or down as needed. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.